us to the first episode in a series of episodes that are focused on providing detailed explanation to answers to each and every question in the August 2023 Science Paper 2. So if you are new to this channel, you are on the right place. Hence, consider hitting the subscribe button to support my channel. If you find this video to be helpful, please consider liking, sharing, and also indicating that you are finding these videos to be helpful through the comment section and also suggesting topics and ways in which we can improve this channel. So let us move straight to question one. Question A1 leads, which of the following is not a branch of chemistry? So what is the question? So the question is, from what we've been given, we need to identify which one is not a branch of chemistry. So we have A, biochemistry. So biochemistry is a branch of chemistry which is concerned with the chemical and physiochemical processes and the substances that occur within living organism. So this is living organism. So it focuses on living organism. Then organic chemistry, this is also a branch of chemistry which is a sub-discipline within chemistry which involves the scientific study of structure, properties and reactions of organic compounds and organic materials. These are matters in which various forms that contains carbon atoms. So this contains carbon atoms. So, so we have the hydrocarbons and other macromolecular organic compounds. Then we have C which is physical chemistry. So physical chemistry is also a branch of chemistry concerned with the application of the techniques and theories of physics to the study of chemical systems. So this is the application of physics to chemistry. Then we have D, thermodynamics. So thermodynamics, this is a branch of physics, not chemistry, that deals with heat, work and temperature and their relation to energy, radiation and physical properties of matters. So thermodynamics is physics, not chemistry. So D is the correct answer. Question 18. Which of the following statements distinguishes between an atom and an ion. So we are distinguishing an atom and an ion. Once you understand the question, it becomes much more easier. So an atom A has different numbers of protons and electrons, while an ion has equal number of protons and electrons. So this part is which is incorrect. So it's not correct. This should be an atom, not an ion. B has no protons, while an ion has protons in collect. So B is out and A is out. C is electrically charged, while an ion is electrically neutral. It's an opposite. This is, which is electrically neutral, is this is an atom. So C is in collect. D is electrically neutral, while an ion has an overall charge, which is true. An atom is electrically neutral while an ion has an overall electric charge. So this is the distinguishing feature. So an atom is neutral because it has an equal number of protons which are positively charged and the electrons which are negatively charged. These they cancel each other, leaving a neutral charge. On the other hand, an ion is an atom or molecule that has lost or gained one or more electrons, giving it a net electrical charge. Hence, D is the correct answer. A3. Which of the following pieces of apparatus can be used to measure accurately a fixed volume of liquid? So, we are looking for a piece of apparatus that can 
be used to measure accurately the fixed volume. So the key word is fixed volume of liquid. That's what we are looking for. We have a, a bullet. A bullet is used to accurately measure the volume of liquid that has been allowed to pour out of it. So A is out. B, measuring cylinder. So a measuring cylinder is used to calculate the volume of irregular solids or liquids by measuring the lies in the level of water. So you put those irregular solids then you want to measure by how much is water rising or the liquid is rising to calculate their volumes. So this is out. See, we have pipette. So pipette is the correct answer. Pipette is used to accurately measure a fixed volume of liquid and is filled using a pipette filler to a line on the upper thin part of the tube. So C is the collecting answer. Separating funnel is incorrect. Separating funnel is used mainly to segregate to immiscible liquids. So this one is immiscible liquids. So these are liquids that are not mixed. So key is the fixed. So this one is for volume of mainly of irregular solids. A form identify a separation technique which can be used to separate a mixture of water and butane. So this is water, a mixture of water and butane. So this is an alcohol. So if you look at these two, these two are liquids that are miscible, not immiscible. They can be mixed. So when they are mixed, these two is difficult to separate them because they don't form layers. They mix. So in such a situation, we need to look for the method that can be used to separate these two. So if you look at a decantation, decantation is incorrect because this is a method used to separate mixtures of immiscible. So this is for immiscible liquids or a liquid and a solid mixture such as a suspension. So this is immiscible. But these two are miscible liquids. So we can't use this one. So A is out. Evaporation. So evaporation, this is a technique used to separate a soluble solid. For example, you can say the soil which can dissolve in a given liquid from a liquid. So we have mud, then you mix with it, maybe clear soil, then to separate the two you need to evaporate water from that, then remain with it, the clear the clear soil. In that case we use evaporation so B is out. Sim fractional distortion. So this is the method which we use to separate miscible liquid like water and butane. So this is the collective answer. So C is the collective answer. Separating final, you see that it's the same as D that you use uh, to separate mix of two liquids into two separate parts. It is based on the principle that the density of these two liquids are different. So these are immiscible. One is on top, then the other one is uh, at the bottom. So this is what you need to know. Question F5. A compound is, so what is a compound? A chemical combination of two or more elements. So if you look at a, we are talking about chemical combination of two. So the key word is chemical of two or more elements. So A should be the collective answer. B, combination of two or more. So because there is no chemical, this one is out. Then C, mixture of two or more elements. Again, the compound is not a mixture. It's out. 
D physical combination of two or more elements again because we're talking about physical is not correct so that's how A is the correct answer. So take note of what is key when you're talking about a chemical combination of two or more elements is what you are calling a compound. So a compound is a substance that is formed when two or more chemical elements are chemically bonded. Chemically bonded and this is why we are saying chemical combination. So this can be a through different kind of bonding which can be covalent bonding or ionic bonding or even metallic bonding. Question A6 which pair of elements form a compound by sharing electrons. So sharing electrons we have M so when they are sharing electron, what is the type of bond you are talking about? So the type of bond you are talking about is covalent bonding. If you look at M, between argon and oxygen, so argon is a noble gas, which means it has a full set of electrons in its outer shell and it is stable. So in this case, it does not let the form a compound with other elements. So because of this, this one is out. Beam, nitrogen and oxygen. So nitrogen and oxygen is the correct answer because these are elements that are readily willing to share electrons through covalent bonding. So this is the correct answer. C potassium and iodine. Potassium is a metal, iodine is a non-metal which is similar to D again sodium and D chlorine. So in this process, a metal loses electrons or an electron to, in this case, potassium loses to iodine, then sodium loses to chlorine. So the, the metals remain positively charged because they have lost one electron. Then the non-metals remain negatively charged because they have gained an additional or more electrons so that they have a full outer shell. So that's how D and C they are incorrect. So this is how you answer the first five questions. Please join me in the next episode as we look at question 7 going forward.